Welcome to The Power of One. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Dr. Joanne Koza, and we're going to be speaking about a very, very important topic, antibiotics. Welcome to the show, Dr. Koza. Hello. Good to be here. Good to see you, Melanie. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Koza, tell the viewers a little bit about you and your medical background. Okay. Um, I am a practicing pediatrician. Um, oh gosh, I've been practicing medicine since 1987 in the Philadelphia area. I am presently working at um, Sunshine uh, True North in the Conshohocken area, and I practice uh, general pediatrics um, and uh, still going strong full time. Okay. All right. Let's speak about antibiotics. Please tell the viewers what antibiotics treat and what they don't treat. Okay. Antibiotics are medicine um, that are primarily used to treat um, a patient that has a bacterial infection. And usually the antibiotics are given, uh, they, can, they either kill the bacteria or they inhibit its growth. So that's primarily what it's for. Uh, what they don't treat is they do not treat uh, illnesses like viruses. Um, viruses are usually the common cold, which could be the flu. Uh, it could be RSV. It could be COVID. A lot of bronchitis that we see are viral infections. Um, even some sinus infections and ear infections are viral and do not need to be treated with antibiotics. Um, most uh, uh, infections that cause fever and rashes are viral infections and do not need antibiotics as well as uh, stomach viruses, uh, which cause vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends on, you know, um, on, the, on your exam and, and some of the testing. Uh, we can sometimes tell. It's hard to tell because we don't test for all the viruses usually. It's usually a, an exam uh, determination of whether you need an antibiotic. Only if you're severely ill do we start doing tests. Why is it important to take the antibiotic as prescribed and to finish the medication. Okay, so it's important to take the medicine, obviously, so that you can tr you can treat the bacterial infection and you can get better and actually feel better quicker. Um, and it's also important to finish it because if you don't take it as prescribed and finish it, it can lead to what's called to antibiotic resistance. That's mm. the reason why. Okay. Um, okay. Now, um, is there a such thing as antibiotic abuse or using antibiotics when it's unnecessary? I see it. I've seen it every day in my entire time I've been practicing and it's up and it's actually getting worse. Um, I think the pandemic made people more concerned about mm -hmm. their illnesses and um, when they're when they're using it unnecessarily, um, like for cold viruses or other viruses, um, it's just they people just want medicines just to prevent uh, an illness. If they're exposed to somebody that say has strep throat, they want to know should I take it anyway, just to prevent it, um, or you know an exposure prophylaxis, and it's still not a good idea. There are certain patients when it may be a good idea. You know, if you have a cancer patient on chemotherapy or somebody that has an immune system, um, their specialist may want them to be on it preventatively uh, so they don't become severely ill and die. Uh, but even once again, even those patients, they don't like them to be on it because the antibiotic can make them sick sometimes if they didn't need it. Um, there are certain situations, but it's something that you should be followed very closely by your doctor or your specialist before you take um, the antibiotic unnecessarily. Okay. And if one takes antibiotics unnecessarily and when they just take it, when they feel as though they need it, can, can a body become resistant to it? Well, um, what happens is the more you take the antibiotic, um, when you don't need it, even when you need it, it can cause issues. But the more you take an antibiotic, you can develop what's called antibiotic resistance. Um, there's a difference between, we see a lot of people that take antibiotics and they say to us, the antibiotic, it does, that medicine does, amoxicillin doesn't work anymore. 
can, can you give me the next medicine? The reason the antibiotic didn't work probably when they were sick last time is probably because they didn't even need the antibiotic because mm. it was probably viral. Um, and, and that's, that's tough to explain to a, a parent, you know, or a person that's sick. Um, it's not easy to prove, um, that the infection that they have is, is bacterial sometimes, um, uh, unless you start doing, you know, blood work and, uh, and other tests, uh, like urine or strep throats and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, if you take it unnecessarily, you are creating an environment full of, of, um, uh, antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. And not only can it affect the person who's taken the antibiotic unnecessarily, but the people that you're around in the environment, family members, friends, and even people that you don't know, you know, you're at a party, they get the infection and they get sick, but they, but you give them an, a, a strain of a bacteria that's, that's res, uh, resistant to antibiotics, you can make them very sick and they can die. Mm. Mm. Okay. Are there alternatives to antibiotics? Like you said, there are some things that just cannot be treated by antibiotics. Are there alternatives that you give parents? Um, I mean, for children, we try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, most of the time with these viruses, just making sure they drink plenty of fluids so they stay well hydrated. And that means if you're throwing up you don't want to be giving just water mm -hmm. because it doesn't make them better. And they need glucose or sugars. Uh, sometimes they need electrolytes. That's sometimes with kids we do Pedialyte. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's good to eat too when you're, when you're not feeling well, so keep up with your nutrition. As far as other medicines, I mean, I've done probiotics for children if they have really bad diarrhea um, to help replenish the bacteria that they're losing in their stool. Uh, it, it helps them, you know, a little bit, doesn't get rid of the illness because some of these infections can last a couple weeks. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people use homeopathic medicines. Do they work? You know, I, you know, as long as they're not taking it uh, large quantities for a long period of time, that's fine. I think if they're just taking it for a short period of time and it helps them get better, fine. When people start taking things, you know, every day for years at a time or, you know, high doses and combining it with other things, then you start getting into um, side effects that you may not want to see or, and that, that could be a problem. Uh, and I guess people are, are, are parents are like, okay, uh, doc, give me something to, to make this go away. You know what I mean? Like you've been in medicine for years and medicine has advanced over the years so like come on dr Coza, why do we have to be sick now i'm gonna come in your office you gonna give me something you gonna make me all better in about five minutes and then i want to go on about my business is that unrealistic oh my god like every day and the closer it gets to a holiday or the family's vacation or the family's party it's like they just want a quick fix just yeah. get me better i'm supposed to go to work I have to go on a business trip or we have a big party coming up. It's really hard to tell them that they can't get on a plane when their child has 103 temperature. You, you really shouldn't go. Um, people go, people are traveling sick. Um, and that's why everybody's getting sick when they travel or are going on vacations and going to parties. I, we haven't seen a lot, for instance, we haven't seen a lot of COVID in the office, but everyone I hear that's testing positive for COVID has either had a family va uh, vacation with large mm. groups of people, mm. um, weddings where there's hundreds of people and, and traveling. And, and they're all, they're, a lot of people are testing positive for COVID now. So it's, it's out mm. there. Um, it's, it's I, I feel bad, you know, I, you know, sometimes I'll give them an antibiotic and I'll say, here it is to take with you to your vacation. If you have all of these symptoms, then you can begin the medicine. If you're not sure, mm. give me a call. I always tell them to call if they're not sure if they, or if they're away and they get worse, go get checked to make sure you really need it. Right. Uh, right. And I think one of the yeah. most important things, if you take it for something, make sure you follow up. Uh, right. Right. What it is. And you've touched on a, a very important point. Mm -hmm. There are people who are sick and they still go to work. They still travel. They still go on trips and there are parents who know that their child is sick. They still send them to school. They still send them to daycare. They still send them to camp. Like how dangerous 
is is that your child is sick, but it could cause another child to get severely sick and pass away or same thing with adults, right? Because you pass me something, it could affect me totally different. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, it is. Yes, they are. You know, sometimes, I, you know, in all def the defense of the parents, sometimes it's hard to tell because okay. they may feel really sick one minute and then, you know, a couple hours later, they're doing cartwheels and running around the house and playing. Um, I think the, the latest criteria since the pandemic is, um, is if they have to be fever free uh, for 24 hours off Tylenol or Motrin. If you give your kid Tylenol or Motrin, you should not be sending them to school because it's masking the symptoms. Motrin is, is, it lasts for six to eight hours in the bloodstream. So, um, but doesn't mean just because the fever's going away, doesn't mean you're not contagious. Um, right. So we always tell them to be off Tylenol or Motrin. Um, I mean, if you're taking it for like cramps or something like that for your period, make sure there's no fever and make sure there's no other symptoms like coughing and, and, and sore throat and vomiting and things like that. Um, but yeah, they, they definitely go. Uh, uh, the, the schools are getting, they're very strict right now. Um, since the pandemic, they pushed down, they pushed the fever down all the way to like 99. I was like, um, they, they send them home with temperatures of 99 now. I mean, fever yeah. is still anything close to 101 or above is a fever. With the pandemic, I think they pushed the temperature to 100.4 or above as the criteria. Mm. Um, schools mostly, when the temperature hits 100, so it's if it's 99.5 or above, they'll send the kids home um, okay. and make them come in and get examined. The only problem with, with sending them home when they first get sick, the parents come in immediately when they're sick and we don't see much of anything. The exam for, for most of the kids when they're in the beginning of the illness is, is, is actually normal. We don't yeah. see anything. And, and which is frustrating because I have to tell them that your ch child may be sicker in the next three to five days. So mm. that means they have to stay home that time period, right. which, you know, they have to scramble for uh, babysitters and, and, or loss of work hours. And, and that's not good. Um, right. And so, especially with viruses, viruses are tough. Uh, they can take, you know, several days to, to get worse and they last, you know, sometimes one to two weeks or longer. And, and they fluctuate. You have a day or two of being really sick and then a day or two of being well, um, and then it goes back and forth. So it, they always want to know, I had vomiting and diarrhea and then it got better. And then four or five days later, they're better. And then it comes back again. And it's usually the same infection. It just, it just, you know, fluctuates in this with the symptoms. And is that when the parents ask you, okay, go ahead and give my baby an antibiotic so we can oh, clear this up and I can get just, back to work and this baby that, can get back to school? Not just that. They also want to know and what, what, what could it be? What mm -hmm. other tests can we do? There, most of the time there isn't anything, especially when they look well. Um, okay. If obviously if they look severely ill, we send them to the hospital, not urgent care. So. Urgent right. care is you have to be urgent care is you have to be careful. Okay. Um, if a child is severely ill, they should be in the emergency room so they can test them and and uh, you know do their X-rays and give them intravenous fluids. If they need intravenous antibiotics, they'll do it and they'll admit them. Urgent care is just like an extension of the office, for the most okay. part. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you have to be careful which urgent care you go to, especially for children. Um, right. The general urgent cares have a tendency to overtreat. Oh my God, they um, they either overtest or overtreat. And we see a lot of kids that come in that are on medicines. And I'm looking at this kid. And I don't see an ear infection. I'm like, oh my God, you've been on antibiotics for two days. There's no ear infection. It means they probably never had an ear infection. It doesn't go away that quickly. Right. Not, not a kind of not the kind of ear infection that requires an antibiotic. Mm. Mm. And that's a perfect example of misuse of antibiotics. So unfortunately, sometimes doctors may prescribe it and, and they and patients don't need it. And I, I can say I'm guilty. Of, yeah, I'm guilty of the same thing. I had somebody not too long ago that came in for a sore throat. They weren't even sick that long. Um, the throat look, didn't look well. So I, you know, I did my testing. It was negative, but it looked awful, almost like it could be a bacterial infection. So, you know, you put them on antibiotics and you tell them to take it until the throat test comes back. In the meantime, they get worse. You see them again. Um, the throat test comes back negative. 
Um, but you have to order blood work to make sure they don't have something called mono. And, and I tell them to stay on it until I get the blood work back. Cause if, if it's not mono and, and the blood count is suggestive of bacterial infection, then, then they're better off on the medicine. Um, the only issue is this particular person's mono test came back negative because uh, it was too soon. It can take up to two weeks for them, sometimes one to two weeks for the mono test in the blood work to become back positive. And um, this patient wound up going to urgent care and the emergency room like three more times. Oh. And eventually, eventually, two weeks after I first saw them, the mono test eventually became positive. But she got another antibiotic on top of that, which she probably didn't need. So, mm. so you have viruses are, are, sometimes you can tell right away what it is. And other times they, you know, they gradually develop their symptoms and it can take a while for the test to become positive. So mm. sometimes you have to hang in there, but other times if there's like, if they're severely ill, if they're dehydrated, sometimes they have to be at the hospital being tested. So it was probably the best thing. She went to the hospital and got tested again because mm. it I tested her too early because she wasn't sick long enough. Oh, um, that's, that's frustrating for families and for patients to understand, um, you know, why, why is she negative? You know, why was she negative early on? Because it was too soon. Mm, okay. And there are different types of antibiotic to treat different things yeah. in your, in your body. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Depending on um, which infection you have, they, we, we're taught to prescribe certain antibiotics for certain infections, yes. Um, uh, yeah, but lately it's been interesting because uh, there was a shortage of amoxicillin in the Philadelphia area and Montgomery right. County. And I think it was the whole United States, uh, frankly, because I was at a conference and other, other parts of the country had problems too. It was very frustrating to use an alternative um, because everybody's, all the kids love amoxicillin. Uh, uh, compared to all the other medicines, which are a little bit more difficult to take uh, and tolerate. Okay. Is it but, because uh, they have uh, side effects? Uh, that and they don't like the taste for kids. Oh, uh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really know the reason why there was an amoxicillin shortage. Um, mm. I don't know. I don't know what the real reason was, but uh, seems to be okay now. Not We're not getting as many people. The pharmacy okay. saying they, they don't have it. Um, and so you've seen a change since COVID and, and people are scared and people are scared to get sick. And because when COVID hit, it just seemed like when you turn on the news, it was like so many people were passing away because of COVID. So you've seen a shift in, in parents asking for antibiotics now because they're afraid for, for their baby to get sick, thinking that it's COVID. Right. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, well, we got lucky in our practice. We saw lots of kids with COVID, but we didn't. We did not have anybody admitted to the hospital. We didn't have mm -hmm. anybody that was seriously ill. Kids for for our practice, COVID was a mild illness, and okay. I think I'm I'm not quite sure the reason. It's not that I haven't seen coronavirus over the years. I saw a, a baby die from coronavirus when when I was in residency in the early '90s. It, really? it, wasn't this, it wasn't this particular strain. Well, you don't know they have it until they die and they, t they, do, they do the tests. Um, but it's, coronavirus is not a new virus. It's just this strain is new. Um, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy for the parents to, to deal with this. Um, uh, the, as far as uh, COVID, I mean, I, I haven't seen any, I've had patients whose family members died I had a family um, uh, where the mom delivered a baby and they all got COVID right around the time of the delivery. And when she came home, everybody got it. And she, they gave it to her, uh, the grandmother who was living with them and she died a week later. Oh. Yeah, so um, viruses are, are, can be very deadly um, mm -hmm. and make certain populations very sick and die. And that includes children too, so it depends. And you can have a healthy child that gets sick and die. You just don't, you just don't know when, when it's right. going to occur. Um, right. I had, my sister had COVID. She was very sick. Uh, mm -hmm. She almost died. She was in the hospital for over a month. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, but it wasn't antibiotics that made her better. It was, you know, the steroids, the monoclonal antibody and oxygen and things like that. And, but it wasn't, it wasn't antibiotics. 
They may have put her, I don't know if they, they could have put her on it anyway, preventatively, but that's not what made her better. It was mm. just time. It was time in allowing the, the virus to heal. And here she is a couple of years out. She still has lung issues because of COVID. Mm -hmm. so, but that's she's alive funny. and working, so that's good. That's good, yeah. So Dr. Koza, what message would you have for parents and for adults? What important message would you have regarding antibiotics? I think that first of all, when your child is sick and you go to the doctors, you have to try to understand what they have, make sure you understand what they have. And if you don't ask, um, if your doctor decides to give your child an antibiotic, you should ask uh, what's given to them. Uh, why are you giving it? How long? How much? Um, and I think a really important question is, do they really need it? Um, I, I have a few parents that will say, you sure my child really needs the antibiotic, which is a, a great way for me to enter and discuss about whether they really need it. Or if I don't really think they need it, I'll tell them, you know what, I don't really think they need it at this moment, but they may in the next, you know, several days or weeks. So you can hold off and wait if you want to. And then there are those people, you know, you know, right away when you're talking to them, um, doesn't matter what you say, they're going to give it to them anyway, because they're, they're scared. Um, mm -hmm. But you really want to know if they really need it. Um, I think the other thing is you really need to understand that you're taking something that does have side effects and antibiotic, re creating antibiotic resistance in that particular person that's taking it is one thing. And also in the community, but also has other side effects. I mean, you can get rashes, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, indigestion, diarrhea, infections like yeast infections, C. diff infections, stomach ache, um, bloatedness, decreased appetite. And for people that are taking multiple medicines, when you take an antibiotic, it either increase or decrease the effectiveness of that antibiotic. And both, both ways can cause problems too. If you're taking something um, and it makes the, the medicine a more potent, it can make you sick. Or if, it, if it's less potent, it can, it can make you sick. So it's, you have to be careful when you're taking these antibiotics. They're not without problems. Um, mm. uh, I think, you know, we're trying, uh, the last conference I went to, I went to a Johns Hopkins conference in Florida, and um, they're trying to have us reduce the length of time. It's really hard when you're used to practicing a certain way and you're giving you know, 10 days of it, but they want us to reduce it in half, half the mm -hmm. time. They're trying for certain infections. They want it to be, uh, you know, reduce the dose and the length of time. Which, mm -hmm. um, the problem is um, because of the antibiotic resistance, they've had us, we've had to double the dose of the amoxicillin to cover bacterial infections that require an antibiotic. So we used to give like 40 to 50 milligrams per kilogram of amoxicillin. Now it's like not, you know, 80 to 90 milligrams per kilogram, which is almost, it's double what we're used to giving. So mm -hmm. there can be more side effects when you give more of the medicine. But we, we did that because we knew the kids tolerate amox, they, they like it, they'll take it. So if we had to do that, some of the other medicines taste horrible and have side effects that they don't like. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much, Dr. Kozen, for You're the welcome. education on yeah. antibiotics, which is extremely important. Right. Um, I think uh, I think one other thing that I didn't say um, is that one of the one of the reasons I think our practice, our children get, didn't get as sick as our, our patients are vaccinated. So mm. we only take patients who vaccinate. Um, so I think that they have good, good immune systems. They're they're You know, they can fight a lot of other infections. So we make sure that the kids are vaccinated. That's really important. Um, and uh, so. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I thank Dr. Koza for giving us education on antibiotics. It's nothing horrible than being sick and feeling horrible. And we want that quick fix. But understand, sometimes it just has to run its course and then we will be good as new. So please ask your doctor questions if your doctor prescribes antibiotics to your children or to you. It's better to be safe than sorry. Thank you so much for joining me today. Peace and love.